Good morning. It's time for Tiempo. I'm Miguel Perez. And I'm Anna Carbonell. And today we have a very special show because, you know, Anna, I get to learn how to play the congas. And I'm very excited about that because I've been wanting to learn how to play the congas all my life. Who's teaching you to play the congas? Johnny Colon is here from the East Harlem oh. Music School, and he's going to teach me how to play the congas. I can't wait. I'm so excited about it. And I'm going to, I don't know if you've noticed, I'm looking like the banker today, but I'm going to go to the bank while he learns to play the congas. Uh, we have with us today Carlos Cordova, the chairman of the first Hispanic-owned bank in New York City. Yes, and you look like a banker to me. I'm going to come to you for a loan. Miguel, did I tell you about the money I don't have? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll also, Anna and I will also be telling you about some Latin places to go dancing on the weekends. So uh, stay tuned and we'll be right back. Right back. Hello, I'm Corville's Cookie Puss, CP. The Celestial Person, the new Corvell ice cream cake made fresh daily at your participating Corvell ice cream store. Now, for St. Patrick's Day, I'd like to introduce my friend, Cookie O'Puss. My name is Cookie O'Puss, the fresh Corvell ice cream cake. You can also be sending either of us to a friend by calling us toll-free number, and we honor most major credit cards, too. Thanks and a grand day to you now. Goodwill Industries is much more than a collections bin. It's people. Disabled men and women who come to Goodwill for a chance to find satisfying employment. Whether they're processing merchandise donations or doing assembly and packaging for local industries, Goodwill is professional, skilled in training the handicapped to find and keep a job. Goodwill Industries is working for people. You let some other poor slob make you a rich man. Next, on Rich Man, Poor Man, Julie takes Rudy to the altar. I will not have that slut in my house. She is not a slut, and this is not your house. Then... You looking for something? Tom runs into big trouble. Trouble named Falconetti. While Rudy settles down with the girl of his dreams on the next Rich Man, Poor Man. Tomorrow morning at 9.30... The beaver is back, and E.T.'s got him covered. Eddie now owns the Haskell Construction Company. Plus, Ken Howard with some second thoughts. James Mason on Oscar's upcoming verdict. Dina Merrill on Broadway. More cheers for Ted Danson. Lords of Discipline, David Keith. I'm a very competitive person. Then, Tony Bennett on canvas. Plus, Rick and Tracy Nelson. Connie Francis and more, starting tomorrow at 7.30 on Channel 7. The East Harlem Music School takes the kids off the streets of El Barrio of drugs and takes them into a situation where they can learn how to play Latin music. And with us today, we have the man who started the whole thing some 11 years ago, Johnny Colon. Welcome to Tiempo. We're thank delighted you. to have you with us. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Johnny, some 11 years ago, you gave up the glamour of the stage performing. You were a well-known band leader. You had a, m many hit singles. Uh, and you gave all of that up to come back to El Barrio and to give back to the community and to start a school. Why, why did you do that? Why did you come back? And why was there a need for a Latin music school? Well, the truth of the matter is I've been trying to do that since 1963, since before I recorded. But it wasn't until after I recorded and acquired some fame that uh, people were running out back after me to do this. And so uh, I was fortunate enough to be at the right place at the right time. and. Uh, met with someone who said, from a funding source, who said, I love the idea. The idea was to be able to use music as a vehicle to take kids off the streets and deal with the kids who uh, had the potential of becoming uh, virtuosos, as well as the kids who needed self-esteem. What's lacking in our community with most of our kids is self-esteem. If, if you can do it, you will do it. If somebody tells you enough that you can do it, you will do it somebody believes in you, it'll happen. Well, were there an out, a lot of kids out there who weren't getting this kind of instruction in Latin oh, music oh. At, that, at that time? Well, we're the only Latin music school of its kind in the entire United States and quite possibly the world. Uh, we have classes in trumpet, trombone, saxophone, flute, violin, conga, bongos, timbales, acoustic bass, electric bass. So in other words, you, ju you just don't teach the Latin instruments. You teach the conventional instrument, instrument also, but you also teach them how to play the Latin rhythms. On That's it. right. Yes. We teach all the instruments and the salsa style also. I see. Yeah. Uh, how, tell me about the school. How many students do you have there? Uh, how many 
have gone through the school in the 11 years you've been Oh, Jesus. Active. We have had over uh, 10,000 students uh, go through our doors in the 11 years, more actually. Uh, out of those, we've had people who were now playing uh, in Ray Barreto's band, uh, in uh, Conjunto Clásico's band. So Casa some of those people have made it big. Oh, yes. Yeah, indeed. So, so you, uh, when you go out to all these clubs and all these things, you see some of your former students, graduates of the, uh, of yeah. the school performing. It's a very funny thing. I was doing an MC uh, a, a show one time, and a guy called me, and he said, Hi, how are you? And I didn't recognize him, because I knew him from years ago. Yeah. And the guy was playing first trumpet for Casanova, mm -hmm. a kid named Pete Nader. Uh, is doing tremendously well. And we have over 1,600 students at the school now with 400, 400 or so new registrants. How much does it cost? I mean, is it free or how does it work for it's, the students? It's free if you're under 21 years of age. If you're over 21, then you pay uh, $25 per every three months. If you're over 21 and can't afford to pay and can prove it, then you get a scholarship. And where do you get the money for all this? If uh, the school is various free? funding sources. Uh, New York City Youth Board, uh, Department of Cultural Affairs, um, New York State Division for Youth, New York State Council on the Arts, uh, National Endowment on the Arts just gave us a small grant, thank God, and uh, other private sources, corporations. How many students there right now? Uh, over 1,600 with a new reg registration of over 400 students already. So we've got uh, 2,000 some odd students at the school. Where is the school going in the future? What are, you, what are some plans that you have? Where are you taking it? Well, we've established a, a new uh, class, a, a theater uh, arts class. And we have a dance class where we teach modern dance and ballet. Um, we want to go in the direction of establishing the first nonprofit Latino recording company, mm -hmm. which will give us revenues so that we can eventually become self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, because, of course... And it will help promote some of these students that you have also in the recording industry. Definitely. Definitely. Hmm. I'm very delighted that you're here because as, uh, you know that uh, I am going to get a free lesson oh, off of you today. And I, am, I am really <laughs> looking forward to this because I, I was telling Anna, my co-host, that, that I, I really, all my life, I've wanted to learn how to play the congas. And so here's my, free, my opportunity to get a free lesson out of you. And, and so I'm really delighted over that. Tell me, what, what are you, why did you give up, I mean, uh, your, your career, really, to go, to go into the school like this? Uh, well, the truth of the matter is that I haven't given it up. I've continued to play. Not as I was playing in the past, because I was doing all the clubs and the Village Gate and a whole bunch That's of right. other places. You do occasional uh, concerts, though. Oh, I do. And I, you perform with your student band. I understand you have a student band, right? We have uh, a workshop band that's developing now, uh, which is a charanga band. Mm -hmm. We had in the past the brass band, but they're mm -hmm. professionals now, and they're working. And they're on their own now? They're on their own now. I as see. soon as they, they become professional, we let them go, because it's only fair. Um, we, uh, I left partly the scene because um, I wanted to give my community uh, what I had benefited from, yeah. and to give it to the kids and the adults as well. I think uh, it's wonderful that you've come back to, the, to El Barrio to give back to some of what you took out of it when you, when you were there. Oh, yeah. But anyway, we have a film, uh, a tape of you performing in the front steps of City Hall last summer. Terrific. And we're going to watch you now in action. Okay. Sabroso, Thank I tell you. you. Gracias. Um, uh, Latin music has been described as jungle music, African, because of its African roots. And I know it's a lot simpler than just banging on a drum, you know. Uh, tell me, it's a lot more complicated. Teach me something here. I, I really want to learn. Okay, well, uh, it's very simple to play congas and yet very complicated because in the structure you have polyrhythms, which means that a uh, combination of rhythms going against each other seemingly going against each other, but yet going at the same time. Um, 
jungle music only because uh, those ignorant people who couldn't appreciate it called it that, but it's, right. it's a very sophisticated music. Uh, I'll teach you a tumbao first. Okay, and this whatever is, that is, let's go. A tumbao is something that's usually in 4-4 four, four time, and it's, it's done uh, to mambos mostly and other things, wawanko also, but it's, this is a tumbao I'm gonna show you. First thing you do is start with your left hand. Okay. And you rock it like that. And the, the other hand's gonna do a counterpart to that, which is like this. Harder than I thought. Finally, you do this. There you go. That's it. There you go. All right. Oh, God. Oh, teach me it. something else. This is great. I love it. Okay. Uh, let's go to a merengue. Uh, we'll give you the, the preliminary beat, and it's like this. Look out. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. I'm oh. delighted that you could come. It's my pleasure indeed. Thank you. It's been wonderful it's to have you with us. And I'm going to the school to learn. Keep Great. Keep Thank keep you learning. so much. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back. Anna? Next, Latin dollars at work. The beaver is back, and E.T.'s got him covered. Eddie now owns the Haskell Construction Company. Plus, Ken Howard with some second thoughts. James Mason on Oscar's upcoming verdict. Dina Merrill on Broadway. More cheers for Ted Danson. Lords of Discipline, David Keith. I'm a very competitive person. Then, Tony Bennett on canvas. Plus, Rick and Tracy Nelson. Connie Francis and more, starting tomorrow at 7.30 on Channel 7. Ready, get set, let's go! They're up again Saturday. It's the ninth annual Colgate Women's Games. Tune in for exciting highlights of semifinals and finals competition in the world's largest track and field series for women. Join Grand Marshal Cab Calloway, Dina Merrill, and Cliff Robertson, the original Annie, Andrea McCardle, and Sandy, Gary Jeter of the New York Giants, Vanessa Townsville of Dream Girls. The Colgate Women's Games, Saturday at 7. Corvell's Cookie Puss, CP, the Celestial Person, the new Corvell ice cream cake made fresh daily at your participating Corvell ice cream store. Now, for St. Patrick's Day, I'd like to introduce my friend, Cookie O' Puss. My name is Cookie O' Puss, the fresh Corvell ice cream cake. You can also be sending either of us to a friend by calling his toll-free number, and we honor most major credit cards, too. Thanks and a grand day to you now. This is the connection you've been waiting for. Turn on WPLJ for the best rock, the best jocks, the best music mix, with more of your favorites. WPLJ has it all. More of what you want from your radio station. WPLJ, the home of rock and roll. With me is Carlos Cordova, chairman of the board of New York's first Hispanic-owned bank. He and his co-workers at the Capital National Bank are turning inner-city banking into a profitable venture. Welcome, Carlos. And thank you for coming to our show. Thank you. Well, Good the first question is a natural one. And why an Hispanic bank? <coughs> what did you see lacking in the community that would cause you to start your own bank? Well, Anna, working for uh, several financial, New York financial institutions, I felt that uh, there was, our people, or the Hispanic community was not taken care of the way I thought that they should be taken care of. And really, uh, by that I mean that they were not understood their needs, 
how they express themselves, uh, that type of uh, how they lacked maybe the professionalism in presenting their credit needs to the institution, and there was nobody there to assist them in this presentation. And definitely uh, there was a need for it. Uh, we have shown that uh, Bank Capital National Bank has been successful because we have been doing that. We have gone out to the people, uh, assisting the people, assisting the community. Uh, you, you want to do this, you want to improve your business, or you want to uh, expand, we'll, we'll talk to them. We'll... Now, when you started this, there were you and six others, I understand, who actually sat down and decided mm -hmm. that there were needs that were not being met. No. And then you went out into the community? Yeah, it was a, a, a group effort, really. <clears throat> there were six organizers of the bank. But when we receive our preliminary approval from the Office of the Control of the Currency, since this is a national bank, and uh, it, it is the first uh, Hispanic uh, charter bank in the state of New York, we had to go out and raise the capital that needed to open the bank. And uh, we had about 900... Uh, investors? Investors, but 900 community persons who said, yes, there's a need for this type of institution, yes, you know, we'll, we'll support it, and uh, they, they put their money where their mouth was, and uh, they, they helped us open the bank, and we did open the bank. What we have in excess right now, I think we have in excess of 900 shareholders here. Sure. We'd oh. be probably close to the 1,000 mark already. Uh, where is the bank? Well, the bank originally started in Washington Heights, uh, uh, Broadway and 177th Street. That's where our main office is. Uh, last, last year in May, we opened our first branch in Brooklyn. So we do have an office in Williamsburg, and hopefully we'll have a third office uh, before the end of the year. Okay, so go ahead. Now, what, is, what do you see the economic strength of the Hispanic? Well, at Capital, we see the, uh, that our people are beginning, well, they're not beginning, they really they're growing as far as uh, their financial resources. Uh, they have, they are, they're no longer crawling, they're walking, some of them are running. And uh, yes, they are making the monies that maybe at one time they were not uh, uh, able to, not because they didn't know how to do it, because maybe that the facilities to help them develop themselves were not available to them. Mm -hmm. Now, the people who came into your bank originally, well, the people who you went out to actually woo, did you give them any type of referral services or help? Well, we, uh, uh, let me explain uh, to you, uh, for instance, we, we have a small bodeguero coming into our uh, bank and he wants to expand or he wants to buy a second business. Yes, we do counsel with them, we sit with them, we will go over their loan request, their loan application, we will work with their accountants if they bring their own professional people, yes, we will work with them. Uh, uh, we will not tell them, we would assist them in how to make a better presentation to the bank, which makes our job a lot easier. Of course. To, because we do want to, uh, the people to grow and we do want to make money. We, do, we want to make the loans, that's how we make money. I know, but the bodeguero, who is the grocery store owner, would naturally, well, should look into how it, the business is done and how it's run and have some type of knowledge before well, he just goes in and he decides. He has to make the presentations uh, to us. Now, uh, you have established businesses, you have a record. Uh, for a new venture, for instance, we would definitely make a look into the individual's background mm -hmm. a lot closer. Can he bring a new business to you know, success? Uh, has he has the proper uh, experience? You know, can, is his presentation good enough that, that we were willing to take the risk yeah. with him? And, uh, and as far as risk, risks goes, uh, I think that uh, we have a very successful record that our people are good credit risks. Uh, for instance, uh, I Why think is that, that? Yeah, New York City banks, uh, delinquency rate, by delinquency rate I'm talking loans past the over 30 days, mm -hmm. uh, there's a 4.5% overall banks the capital we're under maybe two percent oh, so our you know our people are good payers they're good credit risks now carlos this is a commercial bank not a savings bank what services do you offer the community as a commercial bank well it's true we are a commercial bank but we have a very large savings department you do oh yes we do um 
we do offer a savings account uh, all the for the for the consumer the savings account the Christmas the holidays clubs Christmas clubs you know we even have Hanukkah club uh, we do have checking accounts and uh, then the commercial checking accounts and personal loans commercial loans home improvement loans and uh, array of uh, services that any other bank offers with the exception that uh, we do it with a smile and uh, and uh, we communicate better with our people and we are as we call it the the, the banco su banca amigo su banco amigo oh, that, that's feliz that's alegre servicial <laughs> well listen i'm going to take you off just a little bit because uh, you know taxes are upon us and mm -hmm. um, i just want to know some of us have saved up some money and are ready now to make a little a few investments what advice can you tell us about uh, putting our money where so that we can uh, save ourselves a few bucks? Well, I think that, uh, and that's a good question, I think that each individual person should, it's, it's a different situation altogether. I think that today's uh, rates are high, they're still coming down. I think your money market certificates of deposits are uh, a uh, good investment. Uh, I should also say that uh, Capital National Bank stock is a good investment, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice plug. <laughs> well, thanks, Carlos, for being with us and for your advice. Thanks, Miguel. Next, Latin nightlife. Next on Rich Man, Poor Man, Julie takes Rudy to the altar. I will not have that slut in my house. She is not a slut, and this is not your house. Then... You looking for something? Tom runs into big trouble. Trouble named Falconetti. While Rudy settles down with the girl of his dreams on the next Rich Man, Poor Man. Tomorrow morning at 9.30... The survival of mankind may depend on its willingness to remember the atrocities of its past. To remember six million Jews numbered for death in Hitler's extermination camps. And so adjoining the mall of our nation's capital, the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum will be created. Call this number. Help build this unique commitment to mankind's future. Remember. Ernie's back at Eyewitness News. You know, when they asked me to come back to Eyewitness News, I started thinking about all the things that we had been through together. And I also thought about all the things that we meant to one another. We'll talk with one especially As corny as it may sound, I feel like this is family. And I really feel like I'm coming home. Ernie and Astis is hey, back on the 5 o'clock Eyewitness News, starting Monday. Snapshots from Latin America. But the real world is not just a world of pretty pictures. So often it's a world of poverty and hardship, where children must struggle to survive. And it's the children who suffer most. They are caught in the aftermath of war and disaster and social upheaval. They need help, your help. Through Foster Parents Plan, you can help a desperately needy child overseas. Find out how. Call Foster Parents Plan, toll free, 800-556-7918. With your help, a needy child will have the food, clothing, and education he needs. So call Foster Parents Plan, 800-556-7918. Please call now. A needy child is waiting. Goodwill Industries is much more than a collections bin. It's people. Disabled men and women who come to Goodwill for a chance to find satisfying employment. Whether they're processing merchandise donations or doing assembly and packaging for local industries, Goodwill is professional, skilled in training the handicapped to find and keep a job. Goodwill Industries is working for people. There are maybe 200 Latin nightclubs in New York City. 
uh, showing, uh, presenting all kinds of uh, entertainment from uh, you know Argentinian music to Puerto Rican to Cuban, you name it. But uh, we have five clubs that we want to tell you about today because uh, they are some of the top clubs throughout the city. And in the future programs, we'll be telling you about some of the others. And that's so, for salsa, plena, merengue, the whole right, works. This is where to go <laughs> dancing on the weekend. So start start us off here with your cards. And since again I have the cards, we'll go first. Okay. Casa Borinquen, which is featuring top bands, salsa bands, on Friday and Saturday nights. And that's straight through until 5 a.m. They're at 300 Wickoff Avenue in Brooklyn. And the most popular Latin club in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Then Epoca at 1530 East 222nd Street, which is on Baychester Avenue in the Bronx. And that's intimate club providing a stylish alternative to Manhattan salsa clubs. That's right. It's a very intimate, small little place, but a wonderful music and uh, usually open only on the weekends. Right. And Wednesdays and Fridays is disco and salsa. And on Saturdays until 4 a.m., there's top main bands. That's right. Wednesday, they have a special salsa night. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, Ochentas, one of the hottest Latin nightclubs in town, is at 24, I'm sorry, 2540 Broadway. Fashionable, disco looking uh, nightclub yeah, so with Latin music. Best <laughs> of course, the Palm Tree at 4015 Queens Boulevard in Sunnyside. And uh, you've been to the, the Palm name, Tree? The name says it all, Palm Trees. <laughs> it's uh, very tropical looking. You feel like you're in a Caribbean island uh, attending a casino or a nightclub somewhere down there. Ele elegant club Takes with a lavish decor. Rico. Right. Okay, Casablanca, Broadway and 52nd Street. And if you want to dance to the beat of more than one salsa band, this is the place well, to go. Well, Casablanca is probably my favorite place. It's, uh, it's really a wonderful club. They present uh, the best Latin uh, bands. Uh, you go there on one night, they may have three, four bands. Uh, some of the top entertainers in the Latin music industry are always there. And on Sundays, as a matter of fact, uh, we might as well tell them about what, what's happening there this afternoon. Uh, on Sundays, they have a special uh, dance matinee, which is, uh, has taken the place of the old Chateau Madrid, which closed maybe about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And that crowd has moved now to Casablanca, and they have a Sunday matinee dance uh, 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 starting around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, going on to the wee hours. And uh, they feature people like Tito Puente and Machito, and uh, the, the greatest people. <laughs> and uh, today, as a matter of fact, you know, Machito just won the Grammy Award for Latin music, something we are all very proud about. 74-year-old band leader winning the, mm -hmm. the Grammy. And he's going to be there today with a special party uh, for Machito to celebrate his winning of the Grammy Award. So uh, I think I'll be there this afternoon. Well, now that you've learned to play the congas, it's a good That's time right. for you to be there. You, you can call me Mr. Babalu from now on. <laughs> Mr. Babalu. OK, thanks so very much for being with us. See you next week. See a variety of free Hispanic programs this month at the New York Museum, 49 Washington Street in downtown New York. There'll be special films, children's entertainment, concerts, theater programs, and exhibits. The New York Museum is open every day from noon to 5 p.m.